Greetings, Lucky Legends. My name is Lucky. This is Lucky Lad TV. I forgot to pull up the thingy that I need. I'm your host. For yeah, I am your host for this video. I was trying to remember where I left off. And this is something that I'm going to be doing every now and then. I'll probably do this once a week. Um, this week, I'm doing it on Nips and the Long Island Red Rockies and Cincinnati Loudreds and their coach whose name is escaping me. And I have to go f look it up right now because I'm a writer and I can't do that. Cincinnati Loudreds. Loudreds. Uh, Movo. I don't know why that was escaping my mind. Anyway, uh, the picture that I need, it's on the screen for you guys. It's been there since the fucking beginning. But I forgot to look at it. I mean, I forgot to open it up. Here it is. Okay, now I have it. So this is going to be like a strategy breakdown for, and <laughs> yeah, my face cam's in the middle and it looks weird. I get it. Deal with it. This is going to be like a strategy breakdown for what each team needs to do to win. And as you see here, I don't know why I have... Well, the reason I have strategy against is because I was originally just going to email these snips for him to use, but I'd rather him just watch the video itself so that he can hear my take on it, so that way he hears both sides, meaning his own side and my side. But as you can see here, we have the Long Island Red Rocky strategy against Cincinnati Loudreds, which lists S means sweeper, W means wall, B means both. Then you can see the Pokemon, their type, and everything that they're weak to. A little asterisk, or yeah, asterisk means double weakness. So, and then at the bottom, you see me tallying up how many of each weakness type there are. So you see on the Cincinnati La Loudreds, they have a problem with fairy typing and a huge problem with ice, fire, and rock. Those are the three biggest problems. Ice being the absolutely biggest issue on their team. They have four weaknesses, two of which are double weaknesses. Um, however, the thing that Mulvone has as an advantage is he has a Zygarde. And nobody uses Zygarde for anything. Um, does it learn Stealth Rock? I'm going to go look that up while I'm here. I'm just going to be doing a bunch of shit in the background. Because it's going to be the same thing either way. You're going to see... All you're going to see is the face cam and that picture. Uh, but I need to know if it learns Stealth Rock. Because if it does, it doesn't. What the fuck does this thing do? Is it physical or special? It's physical. Um, it makes a decent physical wall. It's got 121 base defense and 108 base HP. Um, those are its best two stats. I And I mean, its ability is useless. I don't know why he would bring it. I mean, it learned... Um, let's look through its moveset. It learns Glare, which causes paralysis, which is nice because it's a normal type move, so you can paralyze ground types. It learns Land's Wrath, but, you know, Earthquake is better. It learns... It learns Dragon Dance, so it could be a setup. It learns Extreme Speed, and it learns Coil. So Zygarde actually makes a really good setup mod, now that I'm looking at it. So I guess that's what Mulvone would get Zygarde for. Um, like I said, I know nothing about it, but it gets instantly bopped by an Ice-type attack. The issue is, Nips does not have Stab Ice coverage on his team. However, he does have Mega Altaria, which learns Ice Beam. And in this case, physical Ice-type attacks... Actually, sorry, special Ice-type attacks are much better, because the two Pokemon that are double weak to Ice are Gliscor, which is a physical monster, and Zygarde, which is also a physical monster. And the other ice weaknesses are doo -doo 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 -doo, Drag Alge, which is specially defensive, but it's much better to hit it with like an Earthquake or a Psyshock. 
and it has Vivian, which is frail. It's Vivian. But for Nips, all he really has is the Mega Altaria for the Ice Beam. Or he could run... Does Meloetta learn Ice Beam? I feel like it might, because it's, you know, one of those. I mean, it's, it's a legendary, or it may even be mythical. I'm not sure. Let's find out. The other thing about Meloetta, I don't know if Nips is allowed to change its form with Relic Song, but if he is, then that it's kind of like having an extra Pokemon. However, it would be really unnecessary because he already has two fighting types. Meloetta learns U-Turn by level up. Huh. Ain't that a bitch. How do you change form? You use, yeah, Relic Song. Oh, you, somebody has to teach it to you specifically. Um, I don't even remember. Uh, right, if you learn Ice Beam. You do not learn Ice Beam. You probably learn Ice Punch, though. Uh, yeah, you learn Ice Punch. I'm in the black and white 2 thing. I don't know why, but you know, it, it still works the same. You still learn Ice Punch. So, Meloetta learns Ice Punch, which is good, but Ice Beam is much better. Uh, he has Quagsire, which learns Ice Beam, and he has Snorlax, which learns Ice Punch. Um, Halucha also, I believe, learns Ice Punch. I'm not 100% sure. I know Jirachi does, because it learns all of the elemental punches. Alakazam learns the elemental punches. I mean, uh, Magnezone could run HP Ice. But that's uh, Nips needs to set up rocks. It does 50% to two of Mulbone's Pokemon. Both of which are sweepers, so that way you can take them out a lot faster. Uh, but now, uh, I'll get back into the back and forth in a little bit. Right now I want to take a look at Nips' team. You have the Mega Altaria, which can f serve so many purposes. It is, it is one of the most flexible mons in the game. It can do pretty much anything. It can be a physical wall, it can be a special wall, it can be a physical attacker, it can be a special attacker, it can be a setup attacker, or it can just be a regular attacker. It's it's terrifying. He has the Jirachi. Jirachi has 100 base stats across the board. So, in my personal opinion, I prefer running a special Jirachi because it gets Flash Cannon and Psychic, whereas if you're running it physical, it's Iron Head and Zen Headbutt, and I do not like Zen Headbutt because it misses. He has the Manibuzz, that's a wall. He has Halucha and Alakazam, those are both sweepers. He has Meloetta, <coughs> which can be both. He has the Quagsire, which is a wall. <coughs> he has the Magnezone, he has, which can be both. Magnezone has really nice physical defense. I think it's 115, uh, base 115. He has the Blaze skin, that's a sweeper. He has the Roserade, which can do both. Roserade has really good special attack. I don't remember exactly what it is. I'm going to look it up. I think it's like 110. Like, it's, it's up there. Like, it's it's in the 125. I thought that was its special defense. Its base special defense is 105, and its base special attack is 125. So, Rosary hits like a monster. Rosary hits like a monster. And then you have Snorlax. Snorlax is just... Snorlax is one of the fattest mons that you can get, and the reason is... It only has one weakness. Like, if you watched Shady and Nappy's uh, Gold and Silver Soul Link Nuzlocke, randomized Nuzlocke, one of the things you saw is that Shady's Lickitung was really pulling through as, a, as an easy switch in Pokemon, because it's only weak to fighting, and if your opponent's Pokemon doesn't have a fighting type, that's, well, in that case, that it learned naturally through level up, then you don't have to worry because it's it's bulky. But Snorlax, Snorlax has a base HP of 160. It is the, I think it's the highest. No, it's not. It's not the highest in the game because you have like Chansey, Wailord, Blissey. It's it's. I think. Oh, it's number six. I remember because I looked at it. It has the sixth highest. Def the sixth highest HP set in the game, 
and it has 110 base special defense. So it naturally makes a huge special wall. But the other thing is that if you max out its physical defense, and like if you make it an impish nature with 252 EVs in physical defense and 252 EVs in HP, it has 267 HP, 128 defense, and I think like 130 something special defense. I don't remember exactly what it is. I'm gonna go look on Pokemon Showdown real quick. I that's the Snorlax that I run. It is the max physical defense Snorlax because without physical investment, Snorlax cannot take physical hits that well. It can still take them, but you know it can only take I don't know like two. Uh, with the full physical investment, though, it can take them for days. Uh, 130 special defense and 120 when 128 uh, physical defense. So that makes it a really fat mon. At level 50, with the EV spread that I like to run, it has 267 HP, 252 defense, sorry, 267 HP, 128 defense, 130 special defense, and 131 attack, uh, which basically means that you can set up uh, you can run it as a rest set, which I do. I named mine Obesity. <laughs> but the other thing about Snorlax is that it learns a lot of really good moves. It learns Curse, and if you run a max special defense, max HP Snorlax, and you're able to get, like, two Curses up, then it's going to be pretty much impossible to take it out with, without critting it. Because it's just so insanely fat. Like, if you run a Curse... Yawn, sorry, not yawn. Cursed, um, rest with a Chesto Berry, you're, you're good. It's not going to outspeed anything, but you don't need it to. Uh, it also gets Body Slam so you can paralyze things. The other reason I like Snorlax so much is it gets Belly Drum. And Belly Drum is just... It's terrifying. If you are able to set up a Belly Drum, you can... I mean, not as much with... Snorlax because it's really slow, but Belly Drum maximizes your attack. If you're at minus six, it brings you to plus six. It has it effectively has a plus twelve effect. But if we look at uh, Nip's team, also big ice weakness, four things weak to ice. If we include uh, Pirouette form from Meloetta, four weaknesses to Fairy. Uh, uh, irrelevant, but it has, he has three weaknesses to ground, including a double weakness. He has the four weaknesses to flying, the four weaknesses to psychic. But overall, we see that his team has a lot more weaknesses that are only on, like, one Pokemon. We have the water, the grass, the rock, the steel, and the poison. Those are all only on one Pokemon for Nips' team. For Molvone, the only types that are only super effective on one mon are fighting steel and ghost so as we see there steel ghost and fighting won't be that important for either well it won't be very important for nips to have that which means that molvon really doesn't have to worry about something like the he probably has to worry about the blaze again because the Blaziken does hit a lot of Mulvone's team, because fire is going to be very useful. The main thing about Mulvone is that she, she can't handle Stealth Rocks. Nips needs to get Stealth Rocks on the, feet, on the field as soon as humanly possible. Because with... You have the Gliscor taking neutral damage, you have the Keldeo taking neutral damage, you have the Mega Manectric taking neutral damage, you have Weavile taking super effective damage, you have Fortress taking neutral damage, you have Gastrodon taking the resistant damage, you have Veon losing half of its health, Talonflame losing half of its health, Zygarde taking resistant damage, Dra Galade taking resistant damage, and Dragalge taking neutral damage. So the only Pokemon that take resistant damage are Zygarde, Galade, and, oh, Keldeo takes uh, resisted. So he only has three Pokemon. Oh, and Gastrodon. 
He only has four Pokemon that are able to safely switch in on Stealth Rocks without taking like a good chunk of damage. Neutral damage from Stealth Rocks is, I believe, 12%. I think that's one-eighth of your HP, which is like 12.5%. Yeah, because if it's super effective, it's 25, and if it's double super effective, it's 50. Whereas on Nip's team, the issue is he doesn't have anything to get rid of hazards, ex with the exception of Mandibuzz, which learns Defog. Well, he has a couple other, um, I'm pretty sure Mega Altaria learns Defog, it wouldn't surprise me. But he doesn't have a Rapid Spinner, whereas Mulvone does. So Mulvone will be able to keep some, uh, chip damage going with his stealth rocks if he bothers to set them up. He doesn't necessarily need to, but the issue is, if Mana Buzz defogs to get rid of Nips' hazards, then it gets it gets rid of the ones on Mulvone's side as well. So that's not as advantageous as having Rapid Spin. The thing is, with the Fortress over on that side, is a guaranteed rock setup if he starts out with it. The other thing is... Well, not the other thing. If he doesn't open up with the Fortress, he still has the Gliscor, which can defog, and since he doesn't really need the rocks, it's not going to be that much of a problem for him. He has the Fortress, which... If it runs Protect, you can switch it in, Use for you can switch it in. It'll get leftovers back up to, um, like I think 94%. Then you can use protect, and your leftovers will bring you back up the remainder. So, and then you'll get your sturdy back, which means that you can guarantee yourself a rapid spin. So, running protect on fortress may be beneficial. For Nips, he definitely needs to bring the Mega Altaria. It's his fairy stab and Mulvone has a problem with it. It also learns Ice Beam. So, if Nips runs a max special attack Mega Altaria, which I personally prefer, because you run the Hyper Voice, the Dragon Pulse, the Ice Beam, and then just something else. It learns so many different moves. I personally like running Flamethrower on it. I'm virtually certain it learns Flamethrower. I think I remember doing that. Um, Altaria. Altaria learns... So much stuff. So very much stuff. No, not the physical set. Physical set is stupid. Um, yeah, flamethrower. He could also run protect on it. It would be helpful. Uh, the other thing that Nips really needs to look out for is uh, he needs to run a cleric. He needs something with heal bell or aromatherapy. Mega Terrier learns it. My guess is Jirachi learns it. He also needs a wish passer. Um, Jirachi, I know, learns Wish. It's the Wish Pokemon, believe it or not. And, uh, there are probably other Pokemon that do as well. As for recommendations for... I am partial to Nips, because he's, he's a good friend of mine. However, I am a writer, so I do need to be impartial. And I have to say, and I have to tell what each team sh ideally should bring... Nips has to bring the Mega Altaria, he has to bring the Blaziken, and he has to bring something to set up rocks with, whether it's the Quagsire, the Jirachi, or... I think Magnezone learns it. I wonder if Snorlax learns it. If Snorlax learns Stealth Rock, then he should definitely go with the Snorlax. 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 Because the only thing that Mulvon has on his team that really like body Snorlax is okay. You don't learn, do you? No, you don't learn Stealth Rock, so no, kind of relevant. Uh, Nip should bring the Snorlax anyway because it helps with his fire and his ice weaknesses and brings him down a little bit, assuming that he runs the Thick Bat. Other things that Nips needs to bring, he needs to bring his Halucha for the Flying Stab. Maybe bring that instead of the Blaziken. Uh, the Blaziken would be nice for the fire. 
However, you can get fire off of other Pokemon very easily. Uh, Halucha is your only flying stab that actually, like, deals damage. Because Mana Buzz is garbage in terms of trying to actually hurt things. Um, as for Mulvone, he has to bring the Fortress. It's the only thing on a scene that learns Rapid Spin. Although he could bring the Goliath score instead, I think he would favor the Fortress, especially since it has that Sturdy, which is really advantageous. I don't think he's going to bother bringing the Vivian, nor do I think he's going to bother bringing the Talonflame. Just because those aren't huge issues for him, for Nips, but they would be huge issues for Movo and having to switch in on, on rocks for them. My guess is he'll bring the Gallade. It hits a lot of Nips' team, especially with that Psychic. That Psychic hits the Roserade, it hits the Blazekin, and it hits the Halucha. That's a problem. And then it has the Fighting, which hits the Snorlax. It hits the Magnezone. It hits the Meloetta, if it changes form. And it hits the um, Mandibuzz. It's not going to kill Mandibuzz, but, you know, it's neutral damage. The only thing on Nip's team that actually resists fighting is the Rosary and the Alakazam, but I don't really consider Alakazam because, you know, and the Halucha, which I also don't really consider, because they're so frail. They're so very frail. I don't really even think it's worth it. The Mega Altaria actually, however, does because Fairy resists fighting, so that might work for him. Overall, I don't even see the point in... Movon bringing his Mega Manectric. He might bring it, but I think there are six other Pokemon that would be much better for his team. Whereas Nips absolutely has to bring the Mega Altaria. So that's kind of just my little breakdown here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be bringing this like once a week. It's probably going to go up on Saturday. It might go up on a different day. Depends on what goes up when, obviously. But with that, I'm going to get about. Best luck to you out there. I will see you all soon. Goodbye.